All right, so for this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to want to do is take a look at it. So we have sine of arc cosine of negative 2, 2 divided by 3. So remember, the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, when we're having a, we're having a time trying to understand, John, um, where or how do we evaluate for the inverse cosine, well, we look at this and we notice, well, we're not going to be dealing with the unit circle. So we're going to want to make sure that we always create a triangle. So let's go and create a triangle. Now, be careful. Since we're going to be dealing with a triangle that um, we're going to be dealing with the inverse cosine, we've got to make sure that it's going to fall within the correct range. All right? So we look at 57 and we have cosine. Well, actually, first of all, when we have cosine with this problem, we already know that the cosine is going to represent adjacent over the hypotenuse, correct? OK, yep, that's what we're working with. So what we're going to have for this angle, I know that negative 2, 3, and I don't know my other leg, where this angle is going to be theta, and here's going to be my hypotenuse. So the first thing I do is I, correct, I draw a correct triangle. Does everybody see how negative has to be? Because your hypotenuse is not going to be negative. You're going to have your x to be negative. So now, since this, is, this would be in the second, um, well, actually, we, let's just go and work through it here right now. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We could also work on a triangle like this. I should have explained this way. Wouldn't this triangle work as well for cosine? I'll be there in just a second. Wouldn't this triangle work as well? Is this still negative 2 over 3? Yes. But what quadrant would this be in? Would this be in still in the first or second quadrant? This would be in the third quadrant, actually. So therefore, is remember, cosine, ladies and gentlemen, when finding the inverse of cosine, it has to be either in the first or the second quadrant. So you guys could see that this triangle would be labeled in the second quadrant. This triangle would be in the third quadrant. So that's why I'm not going to use that triangle as my example. Does that make sense? Therefore, we know that my x value is going to be positive. Yes? I'm not understanding how you determine that it's in the third quadrant. Well, how um, I'm sorry. Here's the set of coordinates axis, right? It says x is negative 2. So that means that line is negative 2, right? Well, it's either then you either have a line here or you have a line there that are both at 3. So that one, which is in the second quadrant, or that one. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. OK. So now, ladies and gentlemen, once we have a triangle, we have two sides. We have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find our third side. So we do 3 squared equals your leg squared plus your other leg squared. So we have 9 equals x squared plus 4, subtract 4, subtract 4, x equals the square root of 5. Right? Take the square root of both sides. I'm just going to kind of move it along here. So therefore, we have x equals the square root of 5. However, now what we're trying to do is once we've now created the inverse for the correct triangle, now we need to determine what is the sign of that triangle. So the sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So the final answer is square root of 5 divided by 3. Okay? Any questions? <laughs>